Okay, here we go. In another ridiculous and unnervingly accurate take on modern womanhood. Bridget Jones' Diary. Two. The Edge of Reason. Correct. And that is the final rom-com synopsis. Don't think we need to count points to know who won. I think we should. Congratulations on being a middle-aged woman. Thank you. Would anyone else like some chamomile? New category, chick flicks or bullshit. People get their panties in a twist over sex and violence in movies all the time, but the real threat? is love. Rom-coms are worse for us than faces of death. They're worse than even the most violent torture porn. No, they're not. Ooh! Side-by-side -side comparison with torture porn, just to be sure. Anyone have a this player? Okay, first of all, they're all gorgeous, right? And they work these totally kick-ass jobs as like event planners or they own their own bakery or they're on TV and they're totally loving life until one of their friends says, no, your happiness isn't real. It's all meaningless until you find love. Yeah. Because love is the whole point, not just of the movies, but of everything. And of course they're beautiful. Movies are about wish fulfillment. Who wants to watch a bunch of ugly people with crappy jobs torture each other? I'm hoping all of us. I'm with Katie on this one. That is not a healthy love in those movies. There's nothing mutual about it. Those women aren't in control of anything. Because love is about giving up control and giving in to something crazy and reckless, like kissing in the rain without a jacket or my fair lady and a hooker. Yes, Pretty Woman is a perfect example. Or, or watch Made in Manhattan, or Sex in the City. Okay, no, fool me once. The men do all of the work in those movies. They pay the compliments, they give the gifts, they do the broad sweeping romantic gestures. The women's job is just to absorb it all. In those romantic comedies, love is something that men do. It's something that women just fall into. They're completely passive and they're powerless to control their fate. Right! Every woman in a rom-com is a clumsy ship adrift who has no idea what she wants and is just sort of hoping that she'll fall into someone great. Romantic comedies have taught us that if a woman is looking for love, then she's either desperate or hopeless. And if she's blindsided by love when she least expects it, then that's how we know it's real. Which is totally the reverse of how things work in real life. And to that, I say 27 dresses, leap year, and my best friend's wedding. In those movies, the woman chases the man around, sometimes all around the world, to pin him down. And the stuff you're talking about, that happens in every other genre of movie. Horror, action, thriller, they've all got romantic subplots too, and they're a hell of a lot more unhealthy than rom-coms. Do you really think after watching a bunch of people die that Sandra Bullock is in the right frame of mind to decide she's in love with Keanu Reeves? The Lake House was an action movie? Speed! Please keep up, or we'll all explode. <laughs> Wait a second, she watches someone die by bus in the Lake House too, that's weird. We should dive into that. No! We are not redirecting this conversation, or we are, but to, to, me, to, my, to me, the one that I want to say. In the beginning of Speed, they're strangers, and then by the end, Sandra Bullock is ready to dress the protagonist's wounds and, and fall happily ever after in love with him. In romantic comedies, at least they're equals. They're both bright, capable people. They're trading witty barbs, and it's fun, and you love it, and they spend the whole movie proving that they're on equal footing. Rom-coms are fun, because they show you what goes into real love. See anything from say anything. Oh God, fart noise of disbelief. Rom-coms barely scratch the surface of real love. I mean, they never even touch on the dark, weird stuff you gotta do to keep a relationship going. Michael, no one in the world owns a Laserdisc player. I scratched that all up anyway. I'm saying romantic comedies just focus on the very first part of the relationship. All the hard work's up front and then everything's smooth sailing. Dating's a nightmare, finding someone normal is exhausting, and then there's the comical web of lies. Oh, you're only dating a girl so you can win a bet when she becomes prom queen. Ooh, he's in a coma and you're pretending to be his fiance but you're secretly in love with his brother. Lying about who you are so you can trick a mostly fragile woman into sleeping with you. Oh, well, that sounds really grim. Yeah, it is. But the finish line, in every case, is just getting the two people to finally say, I love you, or let's get married, or let's get big fat Greek married. Not in love, actually, actually, that movie is about how some relationships are really hard. Yeah, but then they drown it out with all the other stuff so they can get a happy ending vibe. You got a guy telling his best friend's wife that he loves her using poster board cue cards. A man gathers up an entire village to go propose to his housekeeper, a woman he's never even really spoken to before because she doesn't speak English. She learned for him though. That is not actually love. Love. In real life, falling in love is the easy part. People do it by accident, all the time, with terrible people. It's working on the relationship, that's the hard part. Yeah, but movies about married couples that argue and try to work it out, that's a 
totally separate genre. That relationship dynamic has no place in a romantic comedy. And yet, they're in almost every single one. They're the relationships that fall apart in the first 20 minutes of the film so that the protagonist can move on. There are the marriages that collapse before act two. The relationship that goes up in flames at the beginning is often the truest in the whole movie. They've got problems and stuff to work through. But the moral is, abandon those when they're hard. And find someone who will stalk you to the airport and outrun security instead, because that always works out. Come on, no one's really taking those to heart. If they were, people would be getting divorced left and right. We love origin stories. But we hate being reminded of the work that comes afterwards. I mean, if love is eternal and conquers all, then why would we settle for an imperfect one? Wow. Michael, I think that's the most cogent thing you've ever said. Yep, I'm a wise drunk. Although, to be fair, I got a lot of that from a placemat. And uh, some of it's from this restraining order a chick has out on me. No, I let that lapse. <gasps> Aw. Happy Valentine's Day. You know what would be good? Is a romantic comedy that shows a couple that's like really trying to work at it, and one of them leaves or one of them dies. I, have, I haven't really thought it through. King Kong? Yeah, I think you just described King Kong. Is today Valentine's Day? I oh, thought fuck. I gotta go. Hey, everybody. Thank you for supporting Cracked. If you'd like to subscribe to our channel, please do so now. I don't actually know. One of these directions is the subscribe button. In honor of the year ending, I'd like to give you all a gift because it's the giving season. I am flexing every muscle in my body. You're welcome.